Hi, I'm John Buckite. Mike Perron. We're back with another training minute, and uh, what we want to go over this time is uh, good practice and not so good practice when working with the axe and the halligan. We're going to show you some stuff on how to maybe avoid injury, and uh, you know, the injury can be significant. If you're trying to force entry, everybody's waiting for you. You know, maybe medics are waiting for you to, to gain access to a patient. Maybe the uh, nozzle team is waiting to uh, get the line in on that fire. So if you, you know, strike the, uh, your, your partner's hand and you crush his hand, Don't wanna do that. It, it, it's all over. You, you know, you, you, you've stopped, not only did you hurt that individual, you stopped the, the whole operation. So there's, there's some ways to avoid it. I'll start out with the, you know, we, we hold the tool in a very specific way. Sometimes guys lose this, this, uh, this detail. You know, they might hold the, the tool right up next to the head of the ax. One, one small mistake and, and you've crushed your finger and you might not want to continue that operation and, and you might not recover from that injury. Um, so we, we always hold the tool properly, you know, with good technique. Another common mistake for the, the person that's doing the striking is they might take a measure and they're good to go and then and then they get off balance and they move a little bit. And now they miss. So you add a little smoke and, and that can be really critical. So you want to take your measure, get your footing and stay in that position. Third thing is we like to cross the tools. All right, you have less of a chance of missing the head of that halligan and, and striking your, your partner. Um, Mike's gonna tell you how he likes to hold that halligan to also avoid that type of injury. All right, I'd always rather be on this side of the, of the tool, all right? If I, don't, if, I don't have, if I have a wall here, and this is a corner apartment, then I don't have a choice. I have to be on the door side of the tool, okay? What this gives me, to me, this is a, is, a, is a disadvantage. The only advantage I see to being on the door side of the tool is that I can actually see when the crotch is driven in till it's at the inside part of the stop where the door hits the stop. When that's even with that, I'm where I want to be, and I can force the door. Here's one of the, one of the first problems of being on this side. Once it's driven in, and I go to force the door, I got to pull towards me. I'm not forcing this door. I'm getting on behind it now and pushing to the door. Okay, so that's a two-step process that I don't have if I'm on this side of the, t of the tool. Okay, if I don't have that wall here, and I can be on this side of the tool, I want to be on this side of the tool for a few good reasons. First of all, what we just talked about, after I set the tool, I go into the door, it's a one-step deal, all right? Also, when he's striking for me, and you're always trying to stay perpendicular when you can, guys, all right? You don't want to come sideways. There's more of a chance of getting hit, all right? So he's staying perpendicular. I'm steering the tool around the jam, okay? And what's happening here, you see, you see what's going on. He's trying to hit along this axis. If he misses by the one inch on this side, he maybe gets a finger. I can still continue. It's going to hurt. I may still be able to finish this job out with a broken finger. He's got to miss by four full inches to hit anything vital, which is my wrist or my forearm. All right. He breaks my wrist. If he breaks my wrist, uh, basically I'm not be, I'm not functional at this job. He breaks a finger. We're gonna we're gonna handle it. All right. So I'd rather be on the protected side. Plus, like I said, once you once you set the tool, we go to the door. Okay, the only disadvantage I have to this side is I actually physically have to peek over to see when the crotch of the tool is at the inside part of the stop. All right, and some companies what they do is a small notch, even with the crotch, so that you don't even have to look over when that slice, that notch makes it to the inside part of the stop, they stop. They don't have to look over the, the tool. Okay. Now, one further thing about uh, developing good striking technique is uh, most firefighters have trouble when they uh, don't have enough power. So I'm right-handed. My right side is good. I prefer to strike in, in this direction. But there could be a wall. It could be an obstruction. Maybe we're down a flight of steps. And I might have to swing from my weak side. That's when I lose control. That's when I, that, that's when I begin to get into trouble. So one way you can develop better control is to practice. Well, how are you going to practice? One way that, that we've used is we'll go to a car crusher, a car recycling place, ask their permission, make sure everyone has proper PPE because it is an injury factory, 
and we'll actually force car doors conventionally with a Halligan and a Maul. Gives the guy practice using the Halligan in its many forms, using the point, the edge, the fork, and also gives the guy practice striking, 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 okay? So he can, if, he's, if the firefighter is, is, a, is a good uh, striker, then maybe they can practice on their weak side. If they're not so good, they can practice on their strong side and get better accuracy and better technique. Uh, what we do in my firehouse is um, we set up, hold on a second, John. We set up, uh, we call it a totem pole. We put a six by six into the ground, cement it in. And for the new guys, we, we drive in, we, we tap in large spikes and we have them hit from both sides. I'm, I'm, I prefer swinging left-handed, all right? Make sure you're at least a hand down from the top, okay? I prefer left hand, but you know what? The hallway may not afford you the, the option of swinging where you're comfortable, all right? So you may have to swing from the other side. So we have young guys driving spikes in from both sides, making sure that they can hit from both sides. Now, if you put the tool up, John, put the tool up to the door. If he puts the tool up to the door, I prefer this side, but what am I going to do? If, if, you tend to, if his leg is here, okay, and he's steady that way, I, I tend to have a little bit of a pendulum swing. I may hit the, his leg. And then, and then miss the tool or hit him, okay? So in this situation, if I don't have a couch here and, I, and the hallway affords me to be on that side of the tool, I, sw I swing to this side where he is not, he's not a factor anymore in my hitting this tool, okay? That's one uh, of the things. I never want to put my head very close to the, the uh, head of the Halligan because, again, a slight uh, error, even a glancing blow, it's going to really, really, uh, you know, seriously injure you. Right. When, I was, when we were taught a long time ago, we were taught this side of the door and on your knee when you're forcing. And if, if, heat is, if heat is not driving you to your knees, do you want to be anywhere near in smoke, a guy swinging an ax or more close to your head? No, you want to be, if you have to be on this side of the tool, you want to be up. If you're on this side of the tool, I prefer this even more. Like I said, protected and you go to the door. That's when you're going to use bevel to door. Hey. If it's a tough door and you got to go bevel the jam, you're out here, you're unprotected. You know what? It's a tough job. Now, <laughs> you got to go with it. One last thing about striking. Uh, we never really, you know, swing the tool. Uh, we we want to train for smoke conditions, either light smoke condition to a heavy smoke condition. So in heavy smoke condition, I might actually feel the head of this Halligan, find it, take my measure, and then it's a quick karate chop. It's from, you know, 10 inches. It's, it's not a swing at all. And uh, any movement that Mike's going to do with, with the head of this tool, they're going to be regular, steady moves that he might announce or that I have to be, you know, make attention to. That's why it's always good, too, if you're comfortable calling for the hits. I always say to guys, when you're adjusting this tool, keeping it off the jam and steering it, you are adjusting the tool. You aren't going from point A to point B to point C. By... Calling for the hits, you're making sure in those moves, I'm steady now for the hit. It's, and never look at the guy hitting, guys. Turn around, look at him if he's ready to hit to begin, and your eyes are here or you're not going to set the tool. You're not going to be able to steer this tool in, keeping it off the jam and between the door and jam, if you're watching the guy hit. It's just going to be constantly into the jam. You're going to have problems, okay? The last, the, but here's a point, though. Once I'm in and I want to stop, Okay, I don't go stop and then go to the door. With all the confusion, maybe the masks are on, a lot of noise, radio chatter. If I say stop and go to the door, he may not hear, hear me and then I get hit in the elbow or something, all right? That's the only time I want to look back on him. I say stop and I look and I make sure the ax is shouldered. I make sure he's not coming through with another blow. We're good, bro, go to the door, okay? So it's been a few, a few, uh, we pointed out a few common uh, mistakes that people make and they wind up getting injured. And we also pointed out a few good techniques. If you hone these down and they become regular practice, uh, they'll serve you well when you're out there and you're uh, trying to, you know, get these doors. Is there, there's one more thing I want to add, John, all right? You were talking about heavy smoke. I would like to say uh, there is a sounding technique, right? I kind of use it in heavy smoke mm -hmm. just to make sure the guy knows I'm coming with the next hit. If you hold the tool, and I'll, and I'll demonstrate, and you call for the hit, all right? All right, you call for the hit. Hit. I'll sound it. I'll actually let the guy know. I'm a, I'm a two-sounding mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. I like a, because you, you can tell, that's not a hit. That's a sounding mm -hmm. move. It's, and then, bam. Right. He knows after the, 
He's steady. He's not moving mm -hmm. the tool, and it's coming. Right. All right. Some guys like to sound by doing one. They go and bang. Okay. I like that in heavy smoke. He calls for hits without heavy smoke. I can maybe just straight out as he calls for the hit. Okay. So you kind of got to work this out with your uh, partner before the tour. So find out what your partner likes because you got to mm -hmm. be on the same page with this and stay away from injuries, guys. It's been another training minute. I'm John Buckeye. Mike Perron. Thanks for watching.